Well, thanks for staying with us on the program as we look to broaden our conversations and it's with respect to the aviation industry in Nigeria. Now, and it's a two-part discussion following the first part where we establish the regulatory capacity and function of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. On the second part to that discussion, we're looking at some of the commendations coming in and also in terms of some of the skepticism that has greeted publications of certain print media as it concerns the leadership of the NCAA. Now, to broaden the scope of this discussion, I'm joined by Mr. Michael Achimugu and uh, Ifeko Abdomalik, all of the NCAA this morning. Nice to have you again in the studios. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Now, first off, uh, I would start with uh, the minister's comments. And for those who missed out on it, it's uh, more on the consumer protection uh, capacity and functioning of the NCAA that has brought about some rec remarkable applause on his part. But before we take a listen to that video again, uh, what was your first reactions when you saw Mr. Festus Kayama's commendations to the NCAA? Well, the Honorable Minister's commendation of the work that my department is doing um, shows leadership. Because oftentimes when people think Cosma Protection of the NCAA, they think me, they think Ifeko, who, by the way, officially is the face of consumer protection in aviation in Nigeria, uh, or they think about our DG. It's so easy for people to forget that we have in the department over 206 consumer protection officers working across all terminals, airport terminals in Nigeria, and all of those people are putting in amazing work every day and night. The minister's commendation, therefore, is encouraging for all of those persons because most of the work that they do goes unnoticed you know i would like to thank the honorable minister for his thoughtfulness for his commendation and to assure him uh dg and all nigerians that will continue to put in more work now i'll come to you as assistant general manager flight operations and adjudication he has also said you're the face of uh, consumer protection in nigeria i also want to get your thoughts on the minister's comments before we take a listen to his comments again well, we want to appreciate that he sees what we're doing. The consumer protection officers love their job and want to see passengers happy. We are doing so much with, um, I mean, before now, little recognition. So we are really grateful to the Honorable Minister. Now, at this point in time, for those who might not have been privy to the exclusive interviews released by the State House Media, having sat down with uh, the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Mr. Festus Keamo, a comments on consumer protection. We'll take a listen to the Honorable Minister's comments and then we'll also take reactions from Nigerians on X as to how well they feel that their rights have been protected. Take a listen. There's a consumer protection department of the NCA, and you know I changed the leadership you know, by the blessing of Mr. President, change the leadership of some of these um, agencies. So there's a new department that has come in with a lot of verve and, you know, um, enthusiasm. And they're working so hard. There's been jingles. I'm sure you've seen the jingles uh, calling on people to report their complaints promptly. As we speak to you, so many reforms are going on, apologies and all of that. But that is still not enough. But it's somewhere to start from. We're just starting. And I think Nigerians should just give us some, like they say, give us some rope you know, um, to, to succeed. But I'm happy you have acknowledged that we've raised our game in that, in that respect. We only find ourselves in some kind of quandary when it comes to delays and cancellations and all that. Do you clamp down these airlines because of that? You create more problem. You create more chaos because we are still managing them. And they are not enough. Like I said, they don't have access to their crafts. They have their problems. And sometimes, without telling the public, some of those delays are not their fault. They may be our fault. For example, we're trying to do something about bed strike now. Many of their experience bed strikes when they're about to take off. We are, they pay taxes to us. And so we are supposed to make the air space safe, safe for them to take off. So we are the ones, fan is supposed to be the one clearing the bed, the beds, making sure that the beds don't... Um, interfere okay. with flights. Uh, sometimes it's weather. Sometimes they don't have quick access to jets A1 fuel and all that. So some of these factors are there. Sometimes it's weather. But sometimes it's their own fault too. So we are trying to, of course, in, in making compensation at times, we're trying to separate the issues. What caused this delay? What caused this cancellation? 
and on and on. So it's not entirely their fault in most cases. So it is always a difficult issue to sift through it to say, well, we're coming down hard on you because you delayed or canceled your flight today. The best we can do for that is pay compensation, refund their money. That's the best. You can't climb down the whole airline and the next day there'll be more chaos yes. uh, at the airport. So that's what we're trying to do. It's a delicate situation. The Honorable Aviation Minister, Mr. Festus Kayamo, there speaking, while making a balance for the case that uh, crackdowns cannot be as severe as most Nigerians hope for. At best, it is compensations because some of the faults and delays and cancellation of flights are beyond the natural. Bed strikes, for instance. Now we still have in the studio, Director of Consumer Protection and Public Affairs, Mr. Michael Achimugu. Now, we talked about the commendation he had given to your department, but none on the angle of the best approach towards customer complaints and some sort of compensation. Is this exactly most of the challenges that occasion flight cancellations as most Nigerians experience when they hope to board flights within the country? Yeah, but of course, we have been seeing this over and over, you know, except for the fact that passengers, when they can't get to destination as a due, they, they get, tend to get angry and sometimes some of them become unreasonable, you know. Um, but we have always made it clear. And that's why our regulations exist, to make us an, you know, impartial umpire. When complaints are reported to us, I've always said it, that reporting a case doesn't mean the passenger is right. Our duty is to investigate, which is the, the work that her department does, to investigate you know and then be able to bring justice where justice is due um i'm thankful to the honorable minister for making these things clearer we've always said it that not every flight disruption is the fault of the airlines like he has said sometimes you know the airlines even cover you know for the authorities when the announcement is made no airline is going to tell you over the speakers that this flight is delayed because there's only one scanner at the airport because that will set them uh, be setting them up against fun for instance you know and we have said it here even the last time we were here that on the part of government there's still a lot as well to be done so the approach the best approach to this flight disruption issues needs to be holistic across borders the travel agencies you know as well and all of that so every stakeholder in the, in the industry need to step up for us to be able to win. but however a, a word of caution i did say that this is a global phenomenon it happens everywhere and it will never stop the best we can do is reduce it to barest minimum and where it is the fault of the airline ensure that passengers you know are made comfortable and, and, and compensated like like the noble minister said uh, i was going to say last time we we're here is if we we're recently returned from the u.s right she could not fly the day she was supposed to fly because it had been raining in delaware in the US um, the airline did not pay her compensation because it was rain it was weather so Nigerians need to study these regulations to understand what their rights are and what their privileges are in fact sometimes the cause of the disruptions are the passengers themselves when you come arrive late to the airport for checking on uh, you know and, and boarding and then you are not allowed to and you begin to create a scene you become unruly and it causes delays not only for the passengers on your flight but also passengers for on other flights as well other scheduled flights it's a disruption so every stakeholder is involved and we must be holistic in our approach to solving these issues now it's quite interesting to hear him cite an experience you had in the u.s now and he also mentioned the need for impartiality in the way matters like this are judged now, when you have consumer complaints, how do we best inform the public? The minister has also talked about the circular jingles that are being circulated. But in terms of cons co uh, customer complaints, when they reach your desk, how best does the, uh, the, the, the NCAA handle these issues in informing them on the one hand and making them feel that there's no matter of partiality either on the side of the airlines or on the side of the government? Well, you review complaints according to what the regulation says. So if a passenger is complaining about a disruption, we have officers on ground to tell us about that particular flight, um, the cause of the disruption, how they handle passengers. And then we look at it and see if the passenger is entitled to any form of compensation or whatever the case may be. And then we advise them on the steps we have taken 
and what they are entitled to. For me, I like to look at complaints as they come and upfront tell the, the, the passenger what I understand is the best position, what the position is. Because we see cases where we say to passengers, you know, you, okay, we'll look into it and you have a case. Mm -hmm. And after investigating, we find out that that passenger doesn't have a case. And then they come back to think we have compromised. You know, so upfront we tell passengers, this is your complaint. This is what the regulation says. You might be entitled to something. You might not be entitled to anything, but we will be liaison with the airline to see what the outcome will be. So, you know, we keep passengers updated on all the steps on, of the investigation until it is resolved. Now, he's also cited uh, the cases at hand with the one you experienced, a natural cause for disruption. Yeah. It was owing to the weather. It was yeah. raining. Yeah. In cases like that, uh, is there going to be anything? You didn't get a compensation. Is there any way that... No, uh, it, that's the, it's, um, it's force majeure. It's a situation beyond the control of the airline. And then even if the airline had taken in all reasonable measures, there's nothing it could have done because really it's, it's beyond the airline. So there's no compensation for force majeure situations. Now let's also talk about punctuality on the part of the flying public. It's almost a scenario where we see people in a last minute attempt getting to the counters and insisting that they must board certain flights owing to the uh, importance of whatever functions they tend to attend. Is there a way we can change the African time perspective when it comes to flying early? Well, we do a lot of enlightenment and sensitizations. We tell passengers you have to be at the airport on time. Um, for domestic flights, two hours before your departure and international flights, three hours before. But you know, in all of this, we still engage the airlines to see how they can improve the services and make it easier on the passengers. So maybe what the airlines can do is, you know, put on their counters, you know, the closing time for the, count, um, for the counters so passengers know. You know, um, we understand that the roads, traffic and, and all of that will cause some situations. Sometimes you get to the airport, there's also traffic at the gate, you know, and all of that. But the airline has to close the counter in good time so that they can conclude all pre-boarding formalities. So, yes, closing time is closing time. Uh, and again, if you check on your ticket, you would see that most airlines indicate the time the counter is closed. So the passenger has an obligation to be at the airport before that time and to read the terms and conditions on the ticket. Well, if you're just joining us, we're discussing passenger responsibility and consumer protection. And we have with us officials from the NCAA in the studio. Uh, at this point in time, we'd also call that you also join the conversation on social media where you can express your thoughts or even if you have a complaint, although this is not one of the channels as advised by the NCA for you to lodge such complaints, but it's one for you to gain more knowledge. Now, let's take a look at a couple of tweets greeting the media space this morning as it concerns compensation plans and some Nigerians who are grateful for having received some sort of refunds. Now, one of the first uh, tweets coming in this morning greeting our screen is uh, one posted by the director himself on his verified X handle. He says it's always satisfying to see this and he attached an email uh, with the subject refund refusal uh, it says dear ncaa i want to inform you that i have been refunded by uh, for the sake of uh, um um yeah yes so we're we're now that part has been censored just to keep the parties out of it on friday june 14 2024 but it is most recent and it goes on to say, I appreciate your kind assistance in facilitating my refund. Kind regards. Uh, let's, let's get perspective to this. I know there's been some censorship in terms of the details you don't want to get out. But for the details you're willing to share, could you further share light on this email we received in terms of refund in, in the quest of compensation for a flying, uh, flying member of the public? Yeah, it, it's just the name of the airline that's been, you know. Okay. But 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 it I happens. With, yeah, that but it happens with every airline. Every airline. Anyway, so yes. Um, before I assumed office, these guys in consumer protection at the NCA had been doing amazing work. Nothing has changed really, but the, their work has not been receiving having exposure, and so the vast majority of the Nigerian public did not know. How much work they had been doing you know and my duty my one of my first tasks was to bring this to the fore to public knowledge so that people know one work is being done two 
for those who do not know where to complain. I had personally, before I came to the NCAA, I had issues with an, an international airline and I didn't even know about the NCAA. I didn't know where to report. I had to fight that battle on social media for six months. So I told myself, not under my watch, it won't happen. Nigerians must know, they must know that the NCA cares, we are there to protect them. However, again, um, I, with regards to what Ifeko just said, I, I want to state that, you see, when people complain to us, or via social media especially, it usually goes viral. It, may, it creates the perception that we are not working, right? When they come to us and we resolve those issues, it's important for them that they go back. go back there to that same platform and put it out there that, look, our case, my case has been resolved by these guys. Many of them do not do this, but I say, no way. If you, I always tell them when they come in box to tell me, I say, look, put it out there for awareness, right? When they refuse to do that, I put it out myself. There's 206 people all over the country working hard for you, right? Encourage them. Let them know that they are appreciated. Okay? So, um, there's myriad number of these kinds of uh, posts that you've seen today. A lot of them cooperate with us when I tell them, make a post. They do that. But where they fail to, we will, we will blow on trumpet. Uh, now, let's go back on X and see uh, more tweets uh, or more posts for persons who have decided to be uh, open enough to tell us how far they have gone with uh, receiving compensations and some sorts. Now, now this is at Bori underscore Nala, who says, in re reaction to the post from Mr. Michael Achimugu, says, meaning the system can work if we use the right people so they can refund within a day. We see your work at Michael Achimugu 01. Olushegun Ogunyemi, responding to that, says, the ticket was purchased on the 18th of May 2024. It also goes on to say in a, re a response, beyond refunds, airlines also need to be sanctioned for such acts. I, I think we've talked about the sanctioning part, and the minister had re-emphasized why sanctions are not the best way to go. But uh, before we look at this one, which is also with the amount that was refunded, let me get your thoughts, uh, if we're cool. We've seen the last tweets. Before we look at this one on the screen again, in terms of the proactiveness and the speed in which that refund was received, but is on uh, Boris' thoughts that more airlines need to be sanctioned. Would you want to clear that part again? Sanctions for the not air? refunding? Yes. Well, the airline has an obligation to refund immediately if the payment was made in cash or within 14 days if the payment was made online or via bank transfers. Mm -hmm. what, we, what we have observed is someone sends in a refund request. Now you don't include the documents needed for that refund to go through for instance bank details and you know if it was a third party ticket you know authorization and all of that so sometimes it goes beyond 14 days but clearly when these things come to us we of course go back to the airline to say you have to do this refund and all of that there are sanctions for failure to comply with the NCAA's directives so if it is a sanctionable offense definitely they will be sanctioned well, I hope that answers your question, Ogun Emi, if you're watching. But let's take more tweets this morning. And this one also does have a receipt of the said payment. Uh, we would find it with the sum of 1,500 and 1,056, beg your pardon, 1,000. Uh, yes, 156,000 naira. Yeah. And uh, it's from Olusha Ogun Emi. And uh, you responded, you said, uh, glad this had been uh, speedily resolved. Mm -hmm. how, how speedily was this? Was this in a day? Yes. In a day. Yes. He, he, he had tweeted at me. He mentioned me in a tweet um, and tagged the airline. Uh, before I could even respond, he had paid him. Yeah. But, but again, people tag me to these things maybe because I'm very active on social media. But I want the public to know that the entire department is involved in this. You know, uh, people are doing. When, when these complaints, um, I'm tagged to them. I thought that we have a system. We have a system, and down that down the line, there's a lot of persons involved in resolving these cases. So I would like for people to also give credit to the to my guys in my the, department, the team behind your office. Yes, please. Now let's take more tweets this morning as we look at the activities of the NCAA in line with consumer protection and passenger responsibility. Now this tweet is coming in from Obadaki at Mo Badaki 24. He says, "More of this is coming, sir." I have seen and known one thing about you. That is perfection. You gave all 
your heart, patriotism and service. You work magically. I am proud of you. This accolade has more. You watch. You are destined for greatness, sir. NCAA has got better without you. That's a commendation tweet coming in this morning. Let's look at another with tweet. With you, no, not without you. <laughs> at Buzuzu7 says, uh, let's look at Buzuzu7's tweets and then we'll come back to get uh, Mr. Mike's, uh, Michael's reaction. At Buzuzu7 says, uh, mine was purchased in July 2023. And he mentions the airline as well. And no refund till date despite escalations. I'm sure that tweet will regret our screens as we look at it. He says it's been over a year plus july 2023 he goes on to mention the airline and he says no refund still date uh, i'll come back to you as an adjudicator do you think this is one of those issues that probably falls outside a recommendation or into the nature for the delay of the flight or disruption well i don't even know why this delay has been held since 2023 but i do know that when we receive this kind of complaints we take it up immediately and typically, I mean, 2023 is a long time. I really can't explain why this has taken so long. Uh, perhaps the person also has not reported officially to us. Yes, yes, because, it, you know, the, the protocol is report first to the airline. Before social media. First to the airline. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's where the airline has failed to resolve your issue, then you activate the NCAA. Yes, but even when they come to NCAA, we still get them to go to, to the, the airline. airline. Yes. Okay, the temptation is that uh, most persons are always uh, trigger happy online on their keypads. The right channel will be to go to the airline beyond tagging them online, or go to their designated desk at any airport or their office to report your issue. Uh, if it fails to be resolved at that level, then you can now go to the NCAA. It is also important, like Mr. Michael has said, he is one of such persons active in line with others in his office at the NCAA who are also available on the X space to react to some of these challenges and complaints as you filed it. Now, more comments greeting the conversation this morning. Let's look at another tweet coming in on the show as it concerns this. It's uh, from uh, Dr. Dan Yakubu. It says, it is obvious that your department has made a lot of changes and put in much efforts to change the narrative of the whole aviation sector. Kudos, sir. Uh, Dr. Ali is, is, is looking at it from the broader perspective of the NCAA as a unit. Uh, there's an Nigerians who are more vocal with how much they appreciate changes when they envisage them. Yeah. Um, like I, I will always say, we are working. Uh, Nigerians um, should count it all joy to have the minister for aviation that they have today. Uh, Professor Skiamo has come in with a lot of, let me return his words to him, verve, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, he's a go-getter. A lot of people um, underrated his abilities when he was appointed minister, but I am glad that today he's one of the star boys of this administration. Uh, his Excellency President Bola Metinubu wants to fix Nigeria, and so he has assembled a team. It's impossible for every member of that team to be perfect or even good enough, but in Festus Kiamo, the president has made one of the best choices any president could have made. And in turn, the minister himself has also fished out and appointed uh, the for now the best possible acting uh, DGCA uh, in the person of Cri uh, Captain Chris uh, Onanajomo, my boss, right? Since assumption of office, he has changed the dynamics at the NCA. St before NCA staff can give their best to Nigerians as regulators and to the entire add value to the industry, they need to be happy themselves. They need to be satisfied. And all of the disenchantment that existed before now, uh, the good captain has ensured that it, it's become a thing of the past. If you come to our establishment now, what you see is positivity. And it, it's a good, it's a step in the right direction. Everything is changing. This management team working with the captain um, is a solid management team. And I would like to thank the Honorable Minister and my DGC because, you know, the purpose for which we are in office is to serve Nigerians and make things better. And under their leadership, everything is getting better. Even if we are coherent, has been at the NCA for quite a while before we came, but I can tell that she's happier now than she ever was. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get uh, a response in that regard. Yeah. Uh, I see you smiling. Does that mean that you're on the affirmative in his last comments? Definitely. Things are a lot better in the NCAA. We have the support to do our job. 
And now, you know, we can do it with ease because the DG is right behind us, pushing us and ensuring that we get the job done and providing everything we need to get the job done. So, yes, we do appreciate the DG and the Honorable Minister. Now, now to other broader issues greeting the conversation, I did draw it to the attention of the Director of Consumer Protection and Public Affairs in the NCAA following our review of the newspaper segments here on the show two days ago, where said publication did say that there was worries about uh, the acting DG, Captain Chris Najamo's uh, six-month stay at the NCAA. I've now seen this morning there's been uh, a statement issued by the NCAA on its official Twitter handle in that regard. Care to throw more light on, on this development? The statement is not from the NCAA, it's from the Ministry. From the Ministry. The aviation. You, you only just retweeted. Exactly. Okay. Thanks uh, for the clarification. Yes. Um, this particular issue irks me a lot. Why? Because... Um, there's a lot of detractors who do not want Nigeria to actually, or the industry to get better. People who have benefited from systemic corruption in the past and who are not willing to let go of that corruption. And so uh, they are clutching at straws, trying to create chaos within the system and so that things do not get better unless they return to the helm of, the, of affairs. People who, rather than focus on, this, on the core mandate of the NCA and aviation, which is safety and security, will focus on you know, chasing after contracts for themselves, their brothers, sisters, and in-laws, and they, made, they created a mess of the industry. And they do not want to allow the Honorable Minister and the DGCA to rest, to be able to focus and do their jobs right. You see, the, the rot runs so deep. It, it's the honorable minister mentioned this before about the corruption in the system and a lot of people were saying you know why should he have said that it's killing he's not going to kill the industry before he came these same nigerians were complaining about corruption in the system so if the minister is now affirming what they have said and say look we're going to clean this up why should there be a problem now on the issue uh, they are so focused on you know uh, 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 on, on these distractions, you know, and causing chaos that they do not even care to research before coming out to try and deceive Nigerians. This really is annoying, you know. There's, the public service rules are very, very clear on the issue of uh, the position of acting DGCA. It says one year, and it can that one year can even be renewed. They come out and have been telling people six months. Initially, we chose to ignore, but you see, if you live a lie. To, to take wings for too long, it becomes it begins to uh, uh, bear the resemblance of truth. And that's why I'm glad that the Honorable Minister, uh, minister through the Ministry, uh, was able to uh, respond and put pay to that situation. The, it, it, the, the NCAA is not God unto itself and cannot appoint its own chief executive. So when the appointing authority deems it fit to either confirm Captain Chris or bring anybody else of their own choice, but the NCA continues to work, irrespective of who is at the helm of affairs. Fifty years from now, none of us presently in the NCA will be there. The important thing is to allow the persons at the helm now, the leadership, to do their job and do it right, so that the system can continue to benefit Nigerians and the entire industry. Well, it's an interesting conversation this morning, and to give more perspectives to it, would we'll refer to that uh, publication by the Ministry of Aviation, clearing up the publication by the said print media on the perceived worry by some Nigerians who we hear now from Mr. Chimugu is based on their own selfish interest that's against the larger interests of Nigeria and its quest for progress. Now we'll take a short break and when we return we'll also look at issues of safety and compliance in the best interest that the flying public has timely flights and can be compensated when there is genuine case for such compensations. Stay with us. Well, thanks for staying with us on the show as we greet the second half of this discussion and it's on the activities of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA. Now, the Ministry of Aviation has also released a press statement as it concerns the leadership at the helm of affairs of the NCAA, stating that Captain Najomo remains in acting capacity as the DG. Now, the NCAA on its Twitter handle has also retweeted this press statement. Well, for the sake of those who might not have seen it, let's uh, just go through some of the contents of this press statement. It is dated Wednesday, June 19, 2024, from the Federal Ministry of Aviation and Aerospace Development. The subject is Press Statement. Mr. Chris Najomo remains the Acting Director General of the Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA. The attention of the Federal Ministry of Aviation and Aerospace had been drawn to the publication as published 
uh, concerning this said appointment in the Punch newspaper and it's what with the development in an article of the Punch newspaper of Wednesday 19th June 2024. The title was and I quote, Worry as NCAA acting director's tenure expires. Uh, point two of this press statement is on the public service rule, PRS, which defines the employment relationship between employees and the employer. Now in subsequent publications uh, of, or subsequent tweets rather, it says in the public service, the government in section seven on acting appointments stipulates that the period of acting appointments shall not exceed one year, but in exceptional circumstances may be extended for another year. Now, when you look at the second slide, it talks about the acting director general, Mr. Chris Najomo, who has been in office for only six months. Point three is that for the avoidance of doubt, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Metinibu GCFR, did not appoint Captain Chris Najomo as acting director general of NCAA on a six month center. The appointment was capacity based and on the suspension of the former DG of the NCAA. Now, and for those who want more uh, perspective to this conversation, you can either visit the website of the Ministry of Aviation or that of the NCAA to see the detail of that press statement. But some points that would like to re-emphasize is the provision, even as guided by the public service rule. It's a, a one-year period. There's also an exceptional extension for another year. Okay. So far, so good. We've seen that he's only been there for six months. And I don't know what uh, the mischief makers, like you say, are looking to get out of this. But just to highlight that is in line with the constitutional requirements, how important is this? You know, the NCA operates by regulations. We work by, by the, you know, within the ambit of the law. So does the president and the minister. And so if the public service rule states that Captain Nadomo can be in office for one year and the president you know, has approved that. Why is it an issue? It, 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 these issues do not um, have anything to do with the, the problems, the challenges uh, that are in the industry that we are trying to clean up, you know, and I think that people should just leave these things alone. Of course, people want to continue to benefit. It's just like when a vampire has tasted blood, uh, they, they just can't stop. And so people who have benefited from the system want to continue to do so. We have some of these critics who are, there are persons who have submitted proposals, you know, uh, outrageous proposals to the authority, you know, and when these proposals get denied, they, they come out and begin to pretend to be, you know, uh, constructive critics of the, of the industry. And coming out to tell gullible Nigerians lies all the time. Uh, well, I want to reiterate very uh, firmly that this NCA, today's NCA, you know, under uh, Captain Najomo uh, and the Honorable Minister will not tolerate these kinds of um, um, issues. We will be on ground to always point out the truth, uh, point Nigerians out the truth. However, we are more focused on cleaning up the industry and do carrying out our um, um, uh, regulatory functions. That is why we are here. I'll just come to you owing to your experience with the media as the face of uh, the NCA as well. In terms of what it behoves on, on the media, in terms of factual reporting, this said a press statement was only informed by publication made by print media on Wednesday 19th June. Do you think that the media can better handle issues like this and not be used as tools to spread mischief? Well, of course. I mean, that's the expectation. They should do the right thing, seek out information and clarity before putting out such press statements. Now, let's come back as we look to wrap up this conversation on the part of safety. Safety in the Nigerian airspace is one thing that I must say in recent time has been quite commendable. Very little cases of any issues at all, which we hope stays that way. But this has been through concerted efforts by different agencies within the Nigerian airspace. Uh, how has inter-agency relationship been in Nigerian airspace? Do you think this is one of the reasons why we're enjoying this much safety? Well... I'll say that um, the agency is working. I mean, by agency, I mean the NCAA. Um, our sister agencies are also doing the best that they can. The Honorable Minister has played a fatherly role to ensure that there's synergy among the agencies. But let's not forget I, that the NCAA is big brother to all the agencies. That's why we're the regulators. And we regulate the entire industry. 
it's important that there be compliance. So long as the agencies in the industry comply with, uh, you know, um, the regulations, there will continue to be improved safety and security in our airspace. That said, I must say, I must inform Nigerians that Nigeria has some of the best safety records, despite the challenges that we have. You know, we're not even top 20 when it comes to air mishaps, for instance. You have countries like the US, France, Singapore, on that list of top 10. How many plane crashes really have we even ever recorded in our entire history, not talk of in recent times? People are actually working. It is because some people have the, the attitude of putting down their country, you know, for whatever reasons. Otherwise, most of the things that happen out there do not even happen here. Recently, as recently as last week, um, a, a British Airways flight was headed to the U.S., had gotten to Canada. You know, Canada is just backdoor to the U.S. And then there was a technical problem. And the, uh, rather than proceed to the U.S., which was close by, they went all the way back to, to, to the U.K., taking with them the passengers. Right? There was no compensation. This just uh, um, uh, booked them all for the next available flight. Had that happened here, there would have been massive outrage. The minister would have been blamed. The DG would have been blamed. I, I would like for passengers to please, like the minister said, cut us, cut, cut us some slack because we are working in the best interest. Recently, uh, there was a security audit by ICAO and the results out. Nigeria did excellently well, 71%, which, given the circumstance, was a miracle. But we have detractors going out there to say Nigeria failed woefully, oh, because the minister uh, is always intervening, oh, Captain Nadjomo, this and that. That is, that is not the truth. It does not represent the tr nearly represent the truth. The facts of the matter are that the parameters for scoring in this audit have changed. ICAO is based in, in Canada. Canada scored far less than Nigeria scored. Would you say Canada failed? Is there any exam in this world where 70 is not a pass mark? So, these people do not even rate the audience. They don't rate stakeholders and passengers and Nigerians at large. So they feel like, you know, whatever information we we'll put out, sprinkle a lot of negativity with some lies here and there, you know, will cause chaos. But Nigerians are not that easy to fool anymore. Social media, the internet have made it easy for people to research. Given what we met on ground, sir, Nigeria would not have scored 30% in that security audit had it not been for the efforts of the Honorable Minister and Captain Najomo. Of course, with the cooperation of some of, our, of some of our sister agencies. Let's not forget that Captain Najomo was appointed in December 2023. This audit took place three months later, just three months later. It took sleepless nights. If, if I can, I will accompany the DG on, in, in all the inspections of the airport day and night to ensure that facilities were on ground. What were the comments of the auditors? Who are the true experts? They came to audit and they said, look, what Nigeria has achieved here is nothing short of a miracle. Then some puff puff expert, according to the minister, comes on air or online to come and deceive, try to deceive Golubu Nigerians. We know their game. And let it be clear today that this NCAA is here to stay, here to work. That work that we have been mandated to do is our focus. We will not be distracted by all of these shenanigans. Well, thank you for buttressing that point quite vehemently. Yes. I'll come to you as we wrap up the conversation, and it's from the perspective of, again, the right channels to lodge complaints for the flying public, and uh, some of the platforms on which Nigerians can gain more information and knowledge about the NCAA. Okay, um, we have the NCAA website, nca.gov.ng. If you have a complaint, you can forward to CPD, at nca.gov.ng. You can also call our number 0905-5029506. We have officers manning our numbers 24-7 to receive your complaint. You can file a complaint online as well and um, we will respond within 24 hours. Well, I must thank you for making our time, but I'll also permit you to have a parting shot with the flying uh, public watching this morning on your thoughts as well on how we can achieve the airspace we envision in Nigeria where flights are really disrupted or delayed. Yeah, I'd like to say to Nigerians to continue to be 
patient. The industry is growing. There's room for improvement. We empathize with passengers who suffer the most for these disruptions. But we must also understand that airlines as businesses did not set up to fail. If for every day a plane does not fly, the airline is losing something. So they would not intentionally not want to fly. You know, so um, the Honorable Minister and the, the agencies in aviation are doing the best they can to make sure that you know, these services are improved. Uh, know your rights, but also know your obligations. Okay, study the NCA Regulation 2023, Part 19 especially, uh, as pertains to um, the um, consumer um, protection. And um, don't hesitate to reach out to us at any time. Our doors are open 24-7. Even the Honorable Minister, um, passengers reach out to him in the dead of night. And he responds immediately via WhatsApp especially. Talk more of us. If a cohere does not sleep, neither do I. And that's why I'm always also with you on X. You know, so we are partners and together we we'll achieve a better industry. Well, I must say thank you again to Ifeko Abdumalik, who is the NCAA's Assistant General Manager, Flight Operations and Adjudication, and to Mr. Michael Achimugu, who is the Director, Consumer Protection and Public Affairs. Well, this, uh, this uh, conversation is also available on our YouTube channel for you to rewatch and get the channels for reporting your complaints. It's also advisable that once you take to social media to complain, if you get a refund, not that I'm asking for any cut in it, <laughs> let Nigerians know that your complaints have been attended to and you've received some sort of compensation.